what's going on? I am Greg Sussman, joined by our own Frank Stample, who's here to take us through the waiver wire for week number nine. What's happening, Frankie? Not much, Greg. We're back to four teams on a bye heading into week nine, so there's a lot of moves to be made. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing fantastically, buddy. Fantastically. Let's go to the quarterback position where teams are in desperate need of quarterbacks with those four teams on a bye, as you mentioned. So let's begin in Oakland, where Derek Carr it may not be sexy or exciting, the past couple of weeks have gone pretty well. Yeah, Derek Carr is actually playing extremely well. This entire Oakland Raiders offense has played well so far this season. 6.2 yards per play on offense. That's fourth best in the entire NFL. Derek Carr in week eight, 285 passing yards, three touchdowns. He has multiple passing touchdowns in four of his last five games as well. How about this? Derek Carr currently leads the NFL in completion percentage, 72.1%. He must be throwing a lot of dink and dump passes, right? Well, he also has a career high 7.7 .7 yards per attempt as well. He's had great protection so far this year. The the Oakland Raiders are, num are second in the NFL in adjusted sack rate. Their offensive line is playing extremely well. They have a great run game right now with Josh Jacobs. That's taking pressure off Derek Carr as well. We'll see if they can make any trades. I know that they've kind of been rumored to, to be in on Robbie Anderson, but Tyrell Williams is back. He looked good. Darren Waller looks like one of the best tight ends in the league right now. Even Hunter Renfro is making plays. And Derek Carr is going up against the Detroit Lions in Week 9, a defense that has allowed eight passing touchdowns over the last two weeks. Danny Dimes, Greg, your boy, even threw for four touchdowns this past week going up against this Lions secondary. He finished as the QB1. So I do think there's upside for Derek Carr heading into Week 9. I'm glad you mentioned Danny Dimes, who threw those four touchdowns against the Lions yesterday. Derek Carr up next to face off against the Lions. It's been a nice couple of weeks for Carr. Let's see if it can continue, especially this week, where you may need quarterback, quarterback help off the waiver wire. Up next, at the quarterback position, let's go to the Jets. Let's go to Sam Darnold, who has not looked good over the past couple of weeks. But the matchup is right. My man, Sam Darnold and the New York Jets. Look, week nine, we have no Matt Ryan, no Jared Goff, no Drew Brees. Desperate times call for desperate measures. And Sam Darnold and the Jets are going to face off against the Miami Dolphins. And I understand Sam Darnold has not looked good, throwing off his back foot. The footwork is all over the place. He's making bad decisions. The turnovers have been there. The offensive line has not been good. Adam Gase has not helped his cause. One of those things is actually going to change heading into week nine because the Miami Dolphins do not get any pass rush. They are 32nd in the NFL in pressure rate. So Sam Darnold, while he does not have a good offensive line, should not see a lot of pressure, which means hopefully he's not making as many bad decisions. But ultimately, it is a good matchup going up against the Miami Dolphins, who are allowing the second most fantasy points to opposing quarterbacks so far this season. They have allowed multiple touchdowns in every game this season. Obviously, we like Derek Carr as a number one stream this week as well. If Gardner Minshew were available, you want to grab Gardner Minshew, but in deeper leagues where those guys are already owned, desperate times call for desperate measures. Sam Darnold against the Dolphins. Happy Halloween. Let's all see ghosts in week nine. Duval was seeing ghosts yesterday dressed up as a ghost for Halloween. Sam Darnold, like Frank said, it hasn't been pretty. When you're desperate, well, look for who plays the Dolphins. Next week, it's Sam Darnold and the New York Jets. Consider putting him in your starting lineup. Let's Frankie actually stick with the Miami Dolphins as we get to the running backs. With Kenny and Drake being traded earlier on Monday, that opens up a lot of touches. I don't know about production, but the touches could be there for both Kalen Balaj and Mark Walton. You're going after Mark Walton on the free agent wire this week. How come? Well, Greg, that's because Kalen Balaj is not very good at football. Kenyon Drake was finally freed from the Miami Dolphins. He was traded to the Arizona Cardinals on Monday, which opens up a ton of playing time for Mark, Mark Walton. And I think that the Miami Dolphins were already kind of prepping Walton for this. We saw that in Week 7 against the Buffalo Bills. He played a season-high 52% of the snaps for the Miami Dolphins, and he also had a career-high 14 rushing attempts to go along with 66 rushing yards as well. He already has a game this year with six targets and five receptions. Kenyon Drake leaves behind 15% of the Dolphins' target share, so they're going to need to throw the ball to somebody. Obviously, they're going to throw to some of their wide receivers. Maybe Mike Gusecki gets involved, but they threw the, do throw the ball to their running backs. We know Kalen Balash is not a good pass catcher. We've seen... You know, times this year where they throw the ball to Kalen Balash, he's ducking out of the way. 
Some of his targets have led to interceptions as well. So I think they are prepping Mark Walton to be that guy. And it's a really bad offense, obviously, with the Miami Dolphins. But any running back that's seeing 15-plus touches per game is going to be in play. Mark Walton faces off against the Jets in Week 9. The Jets just allow, uh, they have allowed eight rushing touchdowns on the season so far to opposing running backs. That is tied for the second most in the NFL. They allowed seven receptions to Leonard Fournette in Week 8. They allowed seven receptions to James White in week seven. So I think Mark Walton is going to be the top running back ad this week because Kenyon Drake is no longer in town. And it's a pretty good matchup going up against the New York Jets. No Leonard Williams in the New York Jets anymore. That will certainly open up space for Mark Walton and Kalen Milaj to run through. But as Frank said, Kalen Milaj, not really a good football player. Mark Walton, well, at least the jury's still out. If you're desperate for running back help, consider him this week. On a short week on Thursday, the Cardinals and the Niners, well, they may be short running backs. With the Cardinals, they've lost David Johnson. They've lost Chase Edmonds. They traded for Kenyon Drake. For the Niners, Matt Burita predictably banged up with an ankle injury. Jeff Wilson Jr., well, he got hurt this past week as well. That leaves a committee that was four running backs down to two this Thursday. Tevin Coleman scored four touchdowns this past weekend. Raheem Mostert, well, he scored one. But you know, Frank, they don't want to give Tevin Coleman 20 carries a game, but they want to run the football. That opens up time, space, and usage for Raheem Mostert. Yeah, Greg, death taxes and Matt Breida leaving mid-game due to an ankle injury. This guy is basically the Anthony Davis of fantasy football right now. And playing on a short week, you're right. They're going to need some running backs to step up. And Matt and Raheem Mostert has done that all season long. We saw it in week eight again. Nine rushes for 60 yards, including a 41-yard touchdown. The 49ers want to run the football, as you mentioned. They lead the NFL in rushing percentage. And Mostert has only played 20% of the snaps this past week, but he has made the most of his opportunity whenever he's been given touches, right? So, so far in his career, he has 95 carries in the NFL. He's averaging 6.4 yards per attempt. And like we always say about Kyle Shanahan and his running backs, you want to own them when it comes to fantasy football. I mean, he's produced viable fantasy football running backs wherever he's been. And now that we have only two running backs and we're not dealing with four in this committee, I think in a short week, Matt Breida's availability is going to be up in the air here. Uh, so I do like Raheem Mostert. If Breida's out, Mostert is a high-end flex play going up against the Arizona Cardinals. We just saw what Latavius Murray did. He went for 157 total yards, nine receptions, two total touchdowns as well. I think Mostert's going to be in play as a flex here, Greg. Absolutely. It's a short week, as we both mentioned, where he most are in a spot to produce as a high-end flex play this week. Frank, let's move on to the wide receivers. We want to talk about banged up. That's the Jacksonville Jaguars, Jaguar wide receiving court. They lost D.D. Westbrook early yesterday, Marquise Lee as well, which meant it was the Chris Conley and D.J. Chark show. We talked a lot about D.J. Chark. And now it's time to talk more about Chris Conley, who clearly has Gardner Minshew's attention. Yeah, Chris Conley has been great recently. We just saw against the New York Jets in Week 8, four receptions for 103 yards, including a 70-yard touchdown. Back-to-back -back games with at least seven targets for Chris Conley. During the span, 21% of the target share, 39% of their air yards as well. You mentioned D.D. Westbrook's injury. He's dealing with a neck and shoulder, and he was questionable heading into that game yesterday and left early. We don't know what his availability is going to be in Week 9. And speaking of Week 9, it's a really good matchup going up against the Houston Texans, who are allowing the third most fantasy points to opposing wide receivers. We just saw Derek Carr carve up this Texan secondary, specifically with his wide receivers. The Texans allowed 10 receptions, 221 yards, and two touchdowns to Tyrell Williams, Hunter Renfro. So I think that Chris Conley is going to be in a good spot once again, especially if D.D. Westbrook is out. I think Conley should be viewed as a wide receiver three in that matchup going up against the Houston Texans. In a good spot against the Texans, Gardner Minshew is going to have to throw the football. They're going to want to upset Houston, targeting Chris Conley. Well, that may pay off in a major way. Chris Conley, a fine flex play or wide receiver three this week. Another injury yesterday went to Brandon Cooks as he was concussed uh, midway through the Rams' victory in London against the Bengals. This is the second concussion of the year for Brandon Cooks. And while we know they have a bye week coming up, you may want to consider stashing Josh Reynolds. Cooks has some concussion issues now, so he may not be able to come back as soon as we think. And with Josh Reynolds on the field yesterday, Jared Goff did not hesitate to look his way. 
Yeah, and we've seen Reynolds step in before and have success in the Los Angeles Rams offense. Brandon Cooks left with his second concussion of the season. We saw another wide receiver, Sterling Shepard, deal with his second concussion. He's missed three games in a row. So I understand normally we don't like to pick up players who are heading into their bye week, but I would expect Brandon Cooks to miss some time here. And Josh Reynolds in week eight played 89% of the snaps, three receptions, 73 yards, and a touchdown. He saw eight targets, 26% of the target share actually led the Rams in air yards as well with 42% of their air yards. And Josh Reynolds came in. He was instantly targeted more than Robert Woods. He was instantly targeted more than Gerald Everett. He was also targeted in the red zone. He had three red zone targets. He had two end zone targets. And last year when he filled in for Cooper Cup from week 11 on, he was wide receiver 35 overall down the stretch. So a wide receiver three going to be in play. The Los Angeles Rams has not looked as good as they have in years past so far, but maybe the bye week helps them out. I think Josh Reynolds, you know, given what we saw in this week eight performance, should be on your radar, especially in deeper leagues. Josh Reynolds underwhelmed a bit last year with Cooper Cup out for the season. Potentially a year later, a little bit better. Hopefully Reynolds will not let you down as his Rams offense continues to march toward the playoffs. Tight end has obviously been a wasteland all season long, so we're just going to keep spinning the carousel and hope we find a winner. The carousel right now, it lands on Noah Fan, who's the one that picked up the majority of the snaps and targets from Joe Flacco with Emmanuel Sanders now in San Francisco. How much can we trust or rely upon Noah Fant this week, Frank? Well, I'm not sure how much we trust or rely on these tight ends week in and week out, but we're trying to find players who see opportunity, and that's exactly what Noah Fan had in their first game without Emmanuel Sanders on the team. He actually led the team with eight targets, 25% of the target share, his eight targets and five receptions were easily a season high. We know he has talent as well. He was a first-round pick of the Denver Broncos, and they were talking about this on the broadcast yesterday, that they really want to get him involved in the short passing game and allow him to make plays after the catch. That's why you see the yardage was so low yesterday, but at least they're trying to get him involved. So I think that that's a positive moving forward here, Greg. They faced the Browns heading into Week 9, who have allowed four touchdowns to opposing tight ends so far this season. We mentioned the... 82% of the snaps for Noah Fant. That was easily a season high. He also played 14 slot snaps, which was a season high for Noah Fant as well. So he's on the field. He's running more snaps. He's running in the slot. They're trying to get him involved. They're, you know, they're actually making a cognizant effort of that. And it's a pretty good matchup going up against the Cleveland Browns here. So give me Noah Fant. I think the talent is there. The production will come. The production hopefully will be there for Noah Fant. For those of you that are desperate for a tight end, there is worse options certainly on the table. Noah Fan at least is starting, at least playing all of the snaps, and hopefully the second half of the year he'll be very productive. But if Noah Fan is not your cup of tea, maybe Johnu Smith is. He played yesterday and started for Delaney Walker, who's battling an injury, and hey, he scored a touchdown. Ryan Tannehill looked his way a lot yesterday. Is that something that we can count on going forward, Frankie? I think so, as long as Delaney Walker is out. And even if Delaney Walker isn't out, I think that they have something in Jonu Smith. They use a third-round pick on Smith, and Delaney Walker, one year older, he's more banged up. I think that they're starting to look towards the future with Jonu Smith and some of their young wide receivers. We just saw Jonu Smith led the team in targets with seven, led the team in receptions with six, led them in receiving yards, 78 yards, and he scored a touchdown this past week against the Tampa Bay Bucks. He played 43 of 59 snaps, and he ran 18 routes on 36 Ryan Tannehill dropbacks. So as long as he is this involved, he's seeing the targets, he's playing this many snaps, and Delaney Walker is banged up, I think Jonu Smith is going to be in play again. Tight end is such a wasteland. Just give me guys that are being targeted and guys who have upside based on their athletic profile. That's exactly who Jonu Smith is. Jonu Smith, a top draft pick just a few years ago. We've been waiting for him to succeed on a higher level, certainly in fantasy football for a while. Well, now it's kind of happened with Ryan Tannehill at quarterback. This change may be exactly what his owners needed in order for him to finally find that success. One last position to get to, Frank, and it's your defensive pick of the week. Where are we looking? When in doubt, you got to stream your defense against the Miami Dolphins, right? We're going to try. New York Jets heading into week nine are traveling to face the Miami Dolphins, and the Jets are not good at creating a pass rush, but the Miami Dolphins allow the most pressures per game, so I think they get in the face of Ryan Fitzpatrick or Josh Rosen, whoever's starting at the time for the Miami Dolphins. They create some pressure. They get some sacks. They force some turnovers, whether it's interceptions, whether it's fumbles, whatever it might be, when in doubt, you stream your defense against the Miami Dolphins. That's the New York Jets. I doubt that they're owned in your league. Nor should they be, except for this week where they're facing the Dolphins. When in doubt, as you said, 
pick up the defense facing the Dolphins. You know the Jets' defense. Not very good. That's going to do it for us here in the FanDuel Hurry Up. We appreciate you tuning in tomorrow. J.J. Zacharyson will join me as we go over who's hot, who's not, who you need to buy and sell. Have a great night. Enjoy Monday Night Football. We'll see you back here tomorrow.